Hey everyone, welcome to Wax Pack Wisdom. My name is Jake T. O'Donnell. Today we're opening this pack of 1988 Donruss. Let's just uh, hop right into a junk wax pack here. Uh, apologies for the lack of content so far this week. Uh, I've been a bit under the weather, but I'm feeling better today, certainly well enough to rip some junk wax. And uh, let's see what we get in here, the puzzle piece that we get. Um, looks like it is for a I believe this is the, yeah, this is the Stan Musial puzzle, and we get the eyes, the legendary eyes of Stan Musial, uh, and the head, and uh, the brilliant the brilliant mind that uh, was the league leader uh, career in hits in the National League at the time of his retirement, probably the greatest Cardinal, and um, also the subject of a 59 Tops Friday video that I will, uh, I will uh, share the link uh, so you can watch that and learn about the incredible consistency of that man. Um, all right, so as you also notice here, I, I on the last 59 Tops Friday video, you may have noticed this uh, little addition to our setup here of the uh, the grass, which I, I guarantee you is 100% real. Um, no, it's not, but it's a, I just thought it was a nice little touch to add. Um, Tim, Fl Tim Flannery, longtime coach in Major League Baseball, third base coach, a really nice guy. Um, and was the uh, was was uh, was part of all three of the Giants championship teams in the 2010s is a close confidant of Bruce Bochy. So nice, uh, nice, nice little get there. He was a good player too. Jesse Barfield was also a really good player. Had a great throwing arm from the outfield and uh, uh, an outstanding uh, longtime contributor, sort of five tool like player. Also, I believe spent some time with the Yankees. There's Wally Ritchie. Now here's a cool card. <laughs> Fernando Valenzuela. But it's a picture of him trying to lay down a bunt. Um, of course, Fernando Mania, 1981, the sort of real uh, rookie ace of the world champion Dodgers team that year in 1981, a, a hero um, of baseball in, in Mexico and uh, continued to be an outstanding contributor, an excellent pitcher, for a very long time, you can see in 1986, he did win 21 games. He had uh, 20, 20 complete games. He also looked like he led the National League in complete games again in 1987. Um, signed an extension through 1988. So he was the first rookie to win the Cy Young Award and the Rookie of the Year Award in the same season in 1981. Just one of the more dominant and sort of fascinating seasons and fascinating figures of baseball in the 80s into the early 90s, all right. There's Tom Prince, the great uh, yellow cap there. Hieronimo Baroa, the great hairstyle in the 80s there. Diamond Kings, Hall of Famer, Alan Trammell. The next card is a little stuck to it. Oh, we got another Hall of Famer right after him, but there we go, very nice. Uh, the Diamond Kings, Alan Trammell, extremely underrated. Uh, finally, rightfully got into the Hall of Fame. Had certainly, in my opinion, the statistics for a shortstop to be in the Hall of Fame should have been should have been first ballot. Um, uh, in my opinion, a steady player, uh, a role model type of guy that I tried to model my own game after as a kid. Um, just did everything well and was a you know twenty plus year contributor to a lot of great Tigers teams, formed a really famous double play combination with Lou Whitaker, who should also be in the Hall of Fame. He's like close to the top of my list of guys who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame that aren't in it. And uh, big fan, big fan of uh, Alan Trammell, of course, is on my, the rookie card with Paul Molitor that I have up in my display here. Um, and uh, yeah, for the second time, second time Diamond King, having first been a, a, uh, crowned in 1982. I believe 1987 was like basically his best statistical year 343, 205 hits, 109 runs, uh, four-time All-Star. So he's uh, definitely a, uh, definitely was uh, one of the key marquee players of that era. Speaking of that, there is Ozzie Smith, one of the best defensive shortstops ever. I feel like we've uh, maybe pulled his card on the channel previously, but somebody else that you could look up to and watch as a uh, as a defensive star, just the, the Wizard of Oz, a uh, one-of-a-kind type player, a Hall of Fame talent. Certainly offensive numbers are not as good um, as many others, but he's just one of those guys that his defensive prowess just uh, over, overrode everything. 
and certainly is a deserving Hall of Famer and a great and such a great player. Was traded from the Padres to the uh, um, to the Cardinals early in his career. He spent the rest of his career there. As you can see, not not much power. He certainly did steal bases. Obviously, he was a big part of those Cardinals teams that were fast with Vince Coleman and and Willie McGee and and others, uh, the Whitey Herzog teams. But there you go, another Hall of Famer there with uh, Ozzie Smith. Here's the brother of a Hall of Famer, Billy Ripken, who has a much more famous uh, 1989 Fleer card or 88. I can't remember which year it is off the top of my head uh, because of an error. Uh, it says fuck face on the card. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, John Smiley, there you go. And then we got another Hall of Famer, none other than George Brett, um, who, by the way, it is George Brett's birthday today on the day that we record this. Um, so happy birthday to George Brett. He's listed as a first baseman here at this point, um, but not, you know, certainly was best known for all of his years at third base. We've pulled a lot of George Brett cards on the channel here. I think that the, I was just reading uh, in Joe Poznanski's Why We Love Baseball book about the pine tar incident and uh, how, you know, the guy just like, he played so hard, he worked so hard. He, um, he, he was such a competitor. He wanted to beat everybody. And, um, you know, there's some interesting things about his life, about the relationship with his father. And um, there was a documentary on MLB Network recently that I, I still need to watch, but George Brett, really fascinating figure. So again, more life. Happy birthday to George Brett. Uh, and of course, uh, hope, he, uh, hope he doesn't eat the crab legs tonight. Okay. Dwight Evans, speaking of guys that should be in the Hall of Fame. Again, we pulled a lot of Dwight Evans cards on this, on this channel. Uh, just a, a, just a, such a phenomenal all-around player. The best right fielder of the American League in the 1980s, and a great mustache to boot. Uh, recently, uh, finally got his his rookie card, 1973 tops, and uh, the guy should just be a Hall of Famer. Um, one of the most consistent, best outfielders in baseball in the throughout the 80s and from late 70s into the into the 80s. Um, he should be in the Hall of Fame. That's all I got to say. Um, uh, guys who are maybe close to being Hall of Famers, but not quite. Dave Concepcion, the the short, the great shortstop of the of the Big Red Machine. Um, you know, we're we're kind of getting up there in terms of length on this video, so I'm going to wrap this up. Bob Welch as the um, uh, as the Diamond King, uh, pr very prolific pitcher for the uh, for the A's as well as the Dodgers, number three pitcher in the rotation, uh, critical figure uh, as those those great teams uh, developed. So, great pitcher. And then Terry McGriff, uh, also with the Reds. So, anyway, this was a great pack. Um, we pulled a bunch of, we pulled a should-be Hall of Famer in, in Dwight Evans. We pulled Brett. We pulled Ozzy. We pulled uh, we pulled Alan Trammell. I'm going to leave uh, George Brett up there in the middle as our uh, birthday boy. Uh, happy birthday to our guy. And then I'll leave uh, Ozzy and Alan on the side there. So, uh, thanks very much for watching. Just a, a couple little housekeeping things. Uh, 59 Tops Friday will be uh, will be tomorrow on the channel. Uh, look out for that. Should be some good stuff there. Saturday, uh, Abby and I will be attending the Fenway Card Show. Um, this was, last year's Fenway Card Show was the first card show I had been to in a, in probably like 30 years. So uh, we're really looking forward to that. We're hoping that the weather is okay because usually they do let you go out into the stands, or at least they did last year. Hoping to be able to get some content out there, maybe do some rips. Uh, go through whatever pickups I get at the show and uh, looking forward to seeing the dealers looking forward to seeing folks there if you are there uh, shout us out send us an email waxbackwisdom at gmail.com or hit us up, up on social media and uh, we'd love to meet up and, and, and see you there if you're going to be there uh, should be a great time a lot of great dealers a lot of a lot of people that I really uh, that I love to deal with are and uh, I love to do deals with they're going to be there it's you know a little bit more expensive of a show but it should be a great time and it's ama always amazing to do it at Fenway um, all right, so that's going to do it for this edition of Wax Pack Wisdom. Tell us what you thought of this break. Uh, what's your favorite card we pulled today? Do you have a story about one of the players in this pack? Leave us a comment and let us know. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, we invite you to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our Wax Pack Wisdom content. In the video description, you'll find links to where you can follow Wax Pack Wisdom on all social media channels. You'll also find a link to a list of our favorite nonprofits and charities. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a donation to one of those organizations. It would mean a lot to us. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Wax Pack Wisdom. Take care.